The elephant and the antelope had been great friends since childhood. Born in the same year, the elephant just slightly older than the antelope. They had been an inseparable pair and were present in each of their earliest memories. In fact, they balanced each other perfectly. The elephant was sociable, thoughtful and protective and the antelope was full of inspiration, tenderness and grace. Together they explored their sanctuary, the reserve, and were often found upside down giggling at their shared jokes and explorations. In their teenage years, the antelope began to feel a little possessive of the elephant who had developed a wide group of friends. And as the antelope noticed her possessive behavior, she started to notice even more that antelopes were not like elephants in many ways. Moreover, she noticed that more than just the physical differences, they had different values and beliefs. The more she thought about it, the more she noticed that the elephant was steady, heavy, staid, whereas she was springy and graceful and free. One day, when the elephant and the antelope were wandering the lands, they encountered a group of the elephant's friends. Not wanting to get too close to the giraffe, who seemed enormous today, or tumble with the other elephants, who looked big and boisterous, the antelope dropped her head and announced she was going home to rest. Confused, the elephant could sense something different about the antelope. He'd known for a while, being a sensitive creature, that the antelope's energy did not feel right. She hadn't looked deep into his eyes for a few weeks now and he missed her connection. He turned around and trumpeted to her as she vanished into the distance. Hey, wait! I want to know what's the matter, what's changed? You used to love playing together with everyone. Are you okay? So strange and just slightly embarrassing to acknowledge that she wanted the elephant all to herself. And how was it that he didn't know? How was it that he couldn't read her mind? They were supposed to be the closest of friends. So she looked at him with her peripheral vision so as to avoid falling deep into the abyss of his ocular knowing and said, nothing's wrong, I'm just tired and you seem to enjoy the company of the group more than just my company anyway. So go and have fun with your friends. At high speed, she turned and ran back to the camp. The elephant had started to speak, and yet before the words came out, she had vanished. He felt as if he had been stabbed in the heart. He wondered how long this had been going on. He tried to remember when he had first noticed that the energy had shifted between them. He couldn't. Had he been selfish? Was he responsible for this emotional treacle which she had just poured upon him? Oh, he felt all out of sorts. His body didn't flow in the normal way as he returned to join his other friends. Ow! said the giraffe as the elephant ducked the football through his legs and crashed into him, sending him tumbling. The elephant couldn't hear. He was celebrating his goal. That was all that mattered. He had won. You're not normally so boisterous, said the giraffe to his friend. It's only a game, you know. Later on, the elephant went to check on the antelope. Again, she still refused to look him in the eye. And where he once again chose to ask her, Are you okay? I'm fine. And you couldn't help even if I wasn't. In a sea of disappointment and confusion, the elephant felt as if the energy had been knocked out of him. He fell to his knees and into a long sleep. When he woke up, there was chatter in the camp. As he rubbed his eyes with his giant feet, for some reason, this seemed to improve his hearing. Had he heard right? The antelope had left the camp without saying goodbye. He could not believe his dear friend would leave without saying goodbye. He was profoundly hurt profoundly and deeply hurt by this betrayal. 
What had he done to deserve this? He rushed to find the antelope's parents. Where has she gone? he asked. She's travelling with family. She said she wanted to spend time with her own and discover some of life for herself. She'll be home in time, said the girl's mother, suddenly seeing the forlorn look on the face of her daughter's lifelong friend. Oh, she left this for you. The antelope's mother dipped her antlers and passed a note into the elephant's trunk. It simply said, We should find a way to be happy without each other. Your friend, Antelope. A sudden rage swelled inside the elephant. He marched out of the camp and headed towards the forest where he tore trees branch from branch until some were entirely uprooted. Tired after his outburst, he fell asleep in the forest. And when he woke, it was dark. He felt spaced out and fearful. All of a sudden, the sounds in the forest seemed alien to him and he couldn't trust his own safety. He scrambled towards the edge of the forest on his belly, hoping not to be noticed by anybody. When he finally made his way back to camp, the giraffe invited him for dinner. No, said the elephant sharply. You're going to leave eventually too, so I'd rather not be friends anymore. And just as the giraffe turned around and said, suit yourself, the elephant rushed at him one more time and held him close in apology. I'm so sorry, I didn't mean it. I do want to have dinner with you. I just feel really strange, as if I'm off balance. Please let me be with you tonight. Confused and yet easy company, the giraffe indulged the elephant and ignored the stranger behaviour. After a few weeks, the elephant had become the concern of all the other animals in the camp. He had lost a significant amount of weight. He seemed spaced out and often in a daydream. He was either clingy or dismissive with his friends and often expressed bouts of rage, making more trees in the forest his victims. One day, the lion could stand the sound of the elephant tearing up the trees no longer. He prowled over to see his parents. What is wrong with your son? Is he experiencing must? His parents explained that he was suffering from a broken heart and he would not talk with them and they couldn't reach him. Mmm, said the lion. Well, in that case, we need to summon the dark antelope and she can infuse the elephant with her wisdom. Far on the other side of the reserve, the antelope was discovering more and more of herself. As she ran around with her distant relatives, gambling and jumping as if she was as light as a feather. Near misses over rocks, gambling with her life, gamboling as she tumbled down hills. She began to find the feeling of joy she used to have with her best friend, the elephant. In fact, the more fun she had, the more she thought of him. Until one day, after a six-week break away from home, she realised that what she really wanted more than anything was to be at home. Her cup was full. She had learned that finding joy in herself had allowed her to realise that love comes in many forms. What's more, she'd realised that she had enough love to share with many more people than she had shared it with before. And suddenly, in that moment, she realised the gift of her friend, the elephant. Even though he loved her dearly, he had so much love to share with all his other friends too. And just then, precisely then, she realised that the love he shared with his other friends did not diminish the love they shared. In fact, she realised that her safe and steady friend shared a love with each and every creature that was unique. That his sensitive nature was one that could be ignited through love, safety and the support of his enormous friend network. And then she wondered, suddenly feeling lost. However will I get him to forgive my crazy and emotional outburst? She felt empty. She vowed to take two days straight to find a way. And when she had worked out how to make him forgive her, she would take herself back home. 
Meanwhile, on the other side of the reserve, the black antelope found the elephant banging his forehead repeatedly on the largest tree in the forest. Interesting approach, said the black antelope. I know your power is charging through blocks, and yet why fight a battle you cannot win? What do you care, said the elephant dismissively. I care because you care, my friend, and I can see that your sensitive energy is out of alignment, as if you think there's something missing, maybe. No, I am on my own, and on my own I shall stay. I am stronger alone. No one can touch me, and I am safe. I shall build the highest walls from these trees and live inside my private palace. I shall grow the sweetest treats and sell them to all the other animals. I shall have all the power. I will be known as the best and even the lion will not dare to try to take me down. Is that so? said the dark antelope. Well, before that, I wonder if you might humour me. That sounds like a lot of hard work and so unnecessary when you can live as easily as you did just a few weeks ago at the social heart of this community. Anyway, you do what you want and before you go into isolation, would you spend the next two days with me, please? Ha! Huh. So you want to spend time with greatness, said the elephant. Fine, I will grant your wish. What are we going to do for two days? I hope I'm going to enjoy it. The dark antelope was unmoved by the egocentric comment, as if he was expecting it. Yes, my friend, you will enjoy it. But first, you will agree to do whatever I want for the next two days, and then afterwards, it can be all about you. Fine, said the elephant reluctantly, secretly quite happy. To have the connection. For the next two days the dark antelope had that elephant running up and down the reserve at high speed, trumpeting at high volume and jumping through hoops. To begin with the elephant resisted and yet soon he found his rhythm and began to feel like his old self again. The dark antelope spoke so kindly to him. Look how strong you are. Look how majestic you are. Look how handsome you are. Can you feel how safe you are? Over and over again he chanted these words of praise and love. On the third day, he woke up ready for action and chattering away to the dark antelope. The dark antelope smiled and said, Thank you for giving me two days of your time. I have enjoyed the time we spent together and now it's time for me to leave you in peace. I will be back to check on you from time to time and I will think of you lovingly often. For a moment the elephant felt sad and asked what he would do all by himself. And the antelope gazed far into the distance at all the elephant's friends and family stirring in the early morning sunrise on the other side of the reserve. My friend, you have so many people who want to be connected with you, just as you were only a few weeks ago. Go to them and feel that deep, energetic, joyful connection. And remember, you are loved, safe, and connected to everyone and everything, including me. Oh, it was the best goodbye ever. Elephant wrapped his front legs and trunk around the antelope and thanked her from the bottom of his heart. I love you, said the elephant. I see you, said the antelope. Elephant marched back into camp and bounded over to his friend's giraffe to tell him how much he appreciated their friendship. Giraffe looked at him, confused, and then said, OK, let's play football. 
As the teams gathered, the old group of friends laughed and joked as they played their jovial game of ball. And it was where she had left him that she found him again. Laughing loudly as he scored the first goal of the game, she could feel the vibration of his jovial laughter creating that giggly feeling in her. She was relieved to feel the deep love that she had felt before. And she realized that it was not the same love. It was deeper and more profound, more connected. It was in fact only by allowing the darkness in that she could feel the completeness of love beyond the fairy tale. And she sat there on the sidelines, quietly watching him and cheering with all of their friends as one. Tripped over by the giraffe, he fell in front of her and looking up, he couldn't believe his eyes. I'm so sorry, she said, I never meant to hurt you. I just couldn't get comfortable with how to relate to our friendship as we grew up and as it changed. I needed to work it out. Picking her up in his trunk and tossing her in the air with a loud trumpet, she knew she was immediately forgiven. And at the end of the game, he sat with her, watching the sunset. Gently, he said. We both needed space, space to remember who we are without each other. Unless we deal with the shadow of love, our experience of it will be incomplete, and I know that now. And from this place of knowledge, I can love you unconditionally. No, I will always be here for you. And she looked deep into the abyss of his eyes and knew their bond was forever forged. They leaned in to feel one another in total energetic alignment, safe and comfortable, in perfect heart and root balance and harmony.